Well, friends, it is time to ask a familiar question. Is the A-line running today? And RTD spokesman Nate Curry is gracious enough to come by and answer in, quite in person. Glad to be back. 97% uh, on time. It's running well today. All right. It's just the other lines that are busted today. What happened? <laughs> Took down a whole slew of them. Yeah, we had some overhead cables uh, that had something occur that five of the trains hit them, and uh, we just decided to hit pause on everything while buses took over and uh, just got it resolved about 15 minutes ago. So quite literally the, the trains were hitting like a snag overhead and you had to figure out where it was. Yeah, and that affected our, the pantograph, which is the thing that goes up and connects with it and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it snags that and it just creates more damage. So it's better to just hit pause and, and not, not continue it. Gotcha. Yeah, you and Comcast got to stop putting your lines in the same place. That's the problem <laughs> here. So, all right, I have to ask you though. So yesterday there were some A-line delays. Today, this issue with multiple lines. Is it embarrassing to have two straight days of malfunctions when you got like a thousand public transit advocates in town for rail evolution, or are they like the most sympathetic group ever to the day-to-day -day workings? Yeah, you know they're super sympathetic to this. That they go through this in their own in their own home cities uh, all the time. And I think th this rail evolution conference that's in town is really it's good for us as a reminder to say, hey, thousands of people are coming across the country to see what we've done in Denver, despite our hiccups and despite the warts that we've got. It's still remarkable what we've done, and uh, you know the economic driver that it is. Everybody wants to replicate that, and so it's it's good as a reminder for the hometown here to say it's okay to celebrate it every now and then. When you hear folks come to town and say, and we heard him here on this program yesterday, we want to do what Denver did just without all the mistakes. Yeah, you know, that, shoot, that's that's the the hazard of being the first out of the gate, the guinea pig. Like you're you're going to hit snags, and we definitely have. But I think. I think Denver as a community is gracious enough to be able to share our best practices and, and don't do this, do this, uh, and, and people will learn from us. And I think that's, it's, it's almost an honor to be able to provide that, although it's been painful a little bit. They, they don't bring this conference to cities that don't have impressive public transit, so fair to say. Yeah, they're not going to Kansas City, right? So. Ooh. Yikes, okay. Um, you, might say, you, you can't throw Oakland under the bus because they actually have pretty good public yeah, transit there. So, uh, <laughs> all right. And San Diego, and not bad. All right, we'll go for Kansas City. Um, Let's talk about the lines that aren't being used a ton. Um, so RTD wants to cut service on the W and the R lines. East and West, ridership isn't meeting expectations. Aurora and Golden, they're mad about this. We'll talk about their concerns in a little bit. I haven't heard an answer to this question. Why is RTD so bad at projecting ridership? <laughs> well, they're, they're not, actually. Like, we're pretty good on the A line. Sorry, the University of Colorado A-Line, uh, you know, we're spot on, and it's actually exceeded that uh, now. Uh, all the rest of them uh, pretty much there. There are specific factors with the W-Line and with the R-Line that have commonality that have uh, produced a lower than number than we would have hoped for that we initially projected. Those projections are based off the initial plans, and uh, those plans change. And so that's that's something that we're struggling with as far as that narrative that's out there right now. I think everybody understands that numbers might be off by a little bit, but when we're talking about the R line in Aurora, I mean, it, the train is like a, a scene from The Walking Dead. Like there aren't live people in sight, and the, your, the projection was more than double what you're seeing there. How is it that far off? Well, uh, the honest answer to that is the original line was going to go straight up I-225. It was going to go through the hospital. Uh, and so at the hospital's request, at Aurora's request, we worked with them. We didn't go through the hospital and we did this horseshoe around the city center area. And uh, you know, it's gonna be a good economic development for, for Aurora, but when you add deviance like that, uh, it adds travel time. And frankly, if, if travel time is one of the most impactful things that people take into consideration. Is it gonna take me an hour to get there on the train? It's gonna take me 30 minutes to get there by driving. I'm gonna drive. So if you have a non-competitive product, depending on where you go, that's when you get lower ridership. Is the line sustainable if you cut the service? And was it worth the expense to build it with the thought that, well, someday it'll be fantastic and packed? Yeah, I mean, I think Fast Tracks is itself, the overall project is really a forward thinking uh, investment by, by the, the region as, as they voted for the tax. If you look at uh, the Southeast Rail Extension that's going down into past Lone Tree, and we're building literally into a couple fields where there's nothing around there with the anticipation that Lone Tree is going to be developing that. And the same thing can be said for the R-Line. We know that it's over capacity right now based on the population and the businesses that are there. And you know, to Mayor Hogan's point, there are a lot of things that are coming online in the next few years. It's not like we're ripping up the rail. Like we're able to add capacity back in as it warrants. It's, it, here's the deal. I can't sit here and hit one government agency for wasteful spending and tell you guys that you need to run empty trains up and down a rail line. Yeah. But at the same time, is there any chance that people will never take hold of that line if they don't have reliable frequent service there now. No, I don't think that's the case. I mean, if you look at the, the W line, uh, Southwest corridor, Southeast corridor, you know, we've, we reduce or, or add service 
uh, three times a year. Most people don't know that, so we're pretty responsive that way. We look at the trends, we look at the public feedback, and the board eventually uh, makes a decision on that. So it's not a foregone conclusion either about our line or our W line right now. It may uh, not go through at all. Mayor Hogan from Aurora seemed to suggest here yesterday that it was, and he said that the way that RTD operates is that you lay down a mandate and tell cities to live with it. And he said instead of having 50 municipalities as partners, you have 50 municipalities as adversaries. That's a pretty damning thing to say about RTD. Yeah, I didn't hear you say that. Uh, you know, that's unfortunate that, that he feels that way about us. I think we've been very good partners. We've been transparent with Aurora. Uh, with that and our process is our staff makes a recommendation we go out to the public for feedback they make a final recommendation and then our elected board votes on that and so they take all of that in consideration right now the process is tomorrow the public public participation starts and we take that really seriously so we expect and, and hope that a lot of people come out and give feedback more importantly though it, it matters more than just giving feedback we want people in Aurora to ride the train so if you're really concerned about it, figure out how to use it. Get out there and ride it. Increase those numbers. That's what it's there for. And so uh, you know, just, just coming online, sending emails, and coming to these meetings is not enough. We've got to get people out there riding it. Has the city of Aurora been a good enough partner to RTD in getting people to ride the train? Uh, you know, I th Aurora is a good partner with us. And they, they've been so excited about this R line. And we have, too. I mean, just bring them into the rail family as far as the region goes. Uh, I think. In large part, the history of RTD is that all of our municipal partners just expect us to go it alone. And where we are today financially, uh, and everybody knows this, over the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to be tight. And we can't do it alone anymore. So we have to have their participation, their partnership. You know, if they want the success of the R line just as much as we do, they need to be out there promoting it with us. Uh, you know, they want that economic development to happen. That's their obligation. Our job at RTD is to move people. We're a mobility agency. We're not an economic development agency. We're not a redevelopment agency for property. Our job is just to move people. And so to, to somehow imply that what we're doing by being good stewards of our resources and, and a regional perspective might impact a large corporation's decision to move a second headquarters here is, uh, is a little disingenuous, I think. That was the Amazon comment that the mayor made yesterday, which is that we're pitching Amazon that we have great public transit, and now look, RTD's cutting service. You feel like that's unfair to put on you guys? Sure, if we have 50,000 jobs that are over $100,000 each, we will be happy to add more, more trains as, as that population <laughs> warrants it. Fair. All right, uh, a couple quick things before we go. Yeah. Timeline for the G line to Arvada. This is the gold line that was supposed to open last year, then yep. the thought was this year. We had a conversation where you said, can't promise it this year. What are we looking at now? It's most likely not gonna be this year. We're, we're hoping to hear back uh, from the Federal Railroad Administration. We applied to begin full testing again to get that finished up, but the major components have been tested. If people have noticed on Wednesdays, they've seen the trains running out there. Uh, you know, we're anxious to get this done. The University of Colorado A-Line and B-Line are at the, at the finish line as well. So as soon as those two are wrapped up, we should be able to uh, get that full testing done. And then we're, you know, hopefully looking, uh, I would say, within the next you know, half, half a year uh, at most. I would say that's the right range. Are you guys within striking distance now of getting the A-Line approved and getting it in a good place? Yeah, yeah, we're hoping to hear back on the final, some final word from uh, the feds uh, this week and then the Public Utilities Commission locally. Uh, that process has begun for the first time with, with them and, and, you know, they've been really great partners. They've been very diligent about doing their job, making sure this is done well and, and we're committed to that too because, we're again, we're setting precedents here in Denver. What we do here will have an effect on their ends, uh, you know, across the state and across the region or the nation and, uh, you know, Revolution is actually really interested and seeing how that process works, because a lot of their cities are going to have to go through the same thing with the FRA, uh, and so they're they're anxious to learn what we've what we've learned. Once you get the sign off from the FRA, then you can start uh, hopefully getting some of these crossings approved. Then we're talking about quiet zones. What's yep. a realistic time frame, knowing that we're looking well down the road for quiet on the A line for all those people who are sick of the horns? Sure, that's the ultimate goal for all of us, I think. And so, uh, you know, it depends on it depends on what happens at the. PUC, whether or not hearings need to be held or whether it just gets straight through. Uh, if there are no more issues with the Federal Railroad Administration, we've got that checkoff. Uh, you know, we're looking at three to six months on, on the optimistic side. And I think if there are hiccups, there are more questions or, or something else we need to adjust, that'll add a month or two each time that that happens. So uh, three to six months is our goal, we're hoping, but y you never know. It, it could be just a little bit longer than that. So, so maybe middle of next year would be a fair expectation for I, people I for quiet so. on the A-line? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely targeting uh, next year for sure. And I think okay. That, that's probably realistic. And then last question, we never talk about the buses. Uh, buses know. don't get any love. Poor buses. Um, we heard from a next viewer named Matt, 
who described sitting on the bus, I think it was the 3L, and shouting directions at a driver who had no idea where she was going because she was new. And your social media team responded and said, well, yeah, we've got a driver shortage. Yeah. I don't recall hearing about this. What's the situation there? You know, it, we're about 120 drivers, uh, driver, uh, bus operators short. Um, and it's been that way since I've been there for almost two years. And so, you know, when you've got a really good economy, like, like we do. People have options. People have options and it's tough to hire and it's tough to retain. Uh, you know, our, this whole joke that I've got about in 2018, we're gonna make buses sexy again. Uh, he's, he's just kind of tongue in cheek, but it's 70% of our, of our business is bus. And yet the majority of our attention is at the rail right now. And so, uh, you know, the buses and our operators do an amazing job. They deal with a lot of crap. Uh, and and you know, they're really professional. They do a good job, and occasionally they get lost, especially if they're new. <laughs> but if you can imagine driving that huge bus, dealing with a bunch of people, trying to make every single stop, it's kind of like that Seinfeld Kramer episode where he's trying to. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather I'd rather miss the turn than not miss a car or something <laughs> yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss the turn every time. Nate Curry from RTD, thank you so much for coming by, yeah. and uh, and fingers crossed for uh, for the A line and for the G line as well. And we'll wait to see what happens with the W and the R. Yeah. Yep. All right, all of Thanks the all the letters. Yeah, thank yep. you. Yep.